Driving in New Zealand and the strange cars you will see there. Firstly, let's be upfront. New Zealanders are an odd bunch. For example, if you own a BMW in New Zealand, any BMW, for some reason you feel compelled to slap an M badge on it. No matter what the model is or how crappy your BMW is, pretty much all of them. In fact, I think I might own the only non-M badge BMW in the country. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. As you might know, New Zealand is all the way down here, far, far from most places. And New Zealand is not as small as you might think. It's about a thousand miles from end to end and has a fairly well-maintained road system, which includes a road that is sort of New Zealand's main interstate. It runs the length of the country and is called State Highway 1. Let me show you a bit of State Highway 1. Uh, wait a minute there, Nick. That just looks like a windy single lane road. Yep, that is pretty much what it is. I almost feel bad for people that own fast cars in New Zealand because there are few places you can really give them the beans, particularly if you're stuck behind that caravan. <laughs> or that caravan. <laughs> or that caravan. However, driving in New Zealand is interesting for a number of reasons. Firstly, we drive on the left, just like the Australians, and the Japanese, and the Indians, and the British, and the South Africans, and of course, the Jamaicans. Yay, Jamaica! Second, the country is very pretty, so you get to see some amazing scenery. Third, you get to see cool road signs, like this, and this. You also get the odd chicken, and a lot of possum roadkill. But most of all, despite being pretty much as far away from everyone as it is possible to get, New Zealand enjoys the widest diversity of cars of any country in the world. What? How is that possible? Well, here's how. We get American cars, we get Australian cars, we get European cars including Skoda, Citroen, Peugeot, all of the European cars we don't get in the US. Uh, we also get the strange Chinese cars and of course we get the Koreans and the odd Russian car. But most of all, we get Japanese cars. And not just normal Japanese cars, we get all the odd lots and experimental Japanese home market cars that are used and imported into New Zealand. See how many of these you have heard of. I mean, there are literally hundreds of them. I just drove around for an hour and found these ones. The Skyline, which of course is an Infinity in the US. The Honda Ara. The Honda Airwave. The Nissan Tina, the Nissan Al Grand, the Nissan Windroad, the Honda Stream, <laughs> and my favorite, the Nissan or Nissan La Festa. I mean, <laughs> just sounds like fun driving that, right? But it is Toyota that takes the prize. They must be running out of English words. They have so many models. Uh, the Fielder, the Esquire, the Estima. <laughs> the Scepter, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look how bung that thing is. The Runex, the Noah, <laughs> the Viz, the Spacio. <laughs> now they're just making up words at that one. The Blade, the Vista, the Ractus, the Mark X, the Granvilla, the Aristo. Now, you might recognize this uh, as a Lexus in the US, but the Japanese, of course, are not as easily fooled. Uh, by sticking an L on a Toyota and upping the price, so they just leave it as a Toyota. Which would also explain the Wisdom and the Harrier and many other Toyota Lexuses, which are Toyotas in Japan, but Lexuses in the US. But not the Platts or the Reflect. <laughs> they should reflect on how to spell reflect. <laughs> oh my god, the Toyota Will, you should see it from the front. The Toyota Rum or Ram. Once again, <laughs> this is just a made up word. Oh, the Toyota Super Windy, maybe a little less broccoli. Uh, the, the Rugulus, what a handsome unit that is. And finally, are you looking to transport a militant group of fundamentalists? Then the Toyota Isis is the van for you.